तो आप हमें बता सकते हैं कि जो बलात्कार हो रही हैं इसको कैसे रोक सकते हैं आप हमें अपनी राय दे सकते हैं श्रोताओं की जो आग लग रही है दोष किसका है किसको हम दोष दे सकते हैं इस पर हम किसको दोष दें ड्राइवर्स को या फिर पुलिस को नमस्ते फीजी देश की धड़कन वीडियो फीजी टू आरोप मैं मोहिनी हमारे साथ में शामिल हो जाइएगा दृष्टिकोण प्रोग्राम में हर सोमवार से शुक्रवार तक रात सात से आठ बजे तक दृष्टिकोण प्रोग्राम में on FPC News, the whereabouts of Fijian troops captured by Syrian rebels Al-Nusra unknown. Postal ballots shipped out to voters in different parts of the world. And political parties kick off major campaign rallies as the election race heats up. Good evening and welcome to FPC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. The Fiji military forces says it's unsure of the location of the 44 soldiers who were detained by the terrorist group Al-Nusra Front affiliated with Al-Qaeda in Golan Heights. According to the leader of Al-Nusra, the troops have been moved to an unknown location out of reach of any security forces. Chanel Sivan was at a press briefing this morning with military commander Brigadier General Mosese Tikoitonga. 44 Fijian soldiers working under the United Nations Disengagement Observer Force tonight remain captive under a militant group in Syria. They were taken by the Al-Nusra Front on Friday. And RFMF Commander Brigadier General Mosese Tikoitonga says, UN negotiators in the Golan Heights have been able to hold talks with the rebel group. The Ansar, our Anzur group, this is an offshoot of Al-Qaeda, the group that is now responsible for holding Fijian troops. They confirm that our men are safe, and they are all well. The CEO and uh, the negotiation team is now unsure of where the location of our troops are. They have uh, been moved to a location uh, out of the bombardment range of any security forces, eh, or the Syrian security forces. So they were about at this stage, I, unfortunately, I cannot confirm. The UN contingent in Golan Heights has been told by Al-Nusra that the 44 Fijian troops have been moved from position 27, where they were initially detained, to another site for their safety. They have taken away all uh, communications from um, uh, the soldiers, uh, including their laptop and their mobile phones and uh, all other communications. So at this stage, since they left, um, or since... Uh, uh, the rebel groups took over their position. We have had no contact with them uh, whatsoever. So this morning was the first breakthrough that this group, the Anzal El Anzura group, um, has finally come forward and said that they are the group that's holding our troops. Eh? Uh, so that's the first round of negotiation. I'm sure sooner or later they will provide a demand to the UN. Uh, but at this stage, I think we can. Uh, uh, Wait and see what happens in the next few days. On Wednesday, the Kunatira crossing in Syria was seized by the rebels, including members of the Al Nusra Front, one of the main group's fighting forces loyal to the Syrian president Bashar al Assad for control of the embattled country. In circumstances as this, we have UN professional negotiators, eh? uh, and some are flying in from New York into going to Syria to, to provide these uh, uh, professional um, uh, negotiators to the situation. Uh, we don't have such expertise. All we have is um, uh, other local contacts within the area that uh, can help us provide some limited information. But as far as negotiating with uh, such group as this, we need professional negotiators and the UN are providing that for us. Eh? They are coming in from New York and from all over the world to come and help. The RFMF have set up a crisis management center in Vatuanga Suva for the families of those who are detained in Golan Heights. Now the names of the 44 soldiers have not been released by the RFMF and they continue to stress that the troops are safe. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. The Fijian's elections office has started packing postal ballots to be shipped out to more than 12,000 voters 
who can't show up at po polling centers on September 17th. The package contains a ballot paper and information on how to cast a postal vote. Edwin Nunn tells us more. 12,204 of these postal ballots will reach voters in Fiji, the United States, Australia, New Zealand, the United Kingdom and other parts of the world. In a postal ballot up, uh, envelope, we have the postal ballot paper, uh, the voter instruction booklet. We also have a brochure to assist the person on how to fill the uh, ballot paper and how to send it back. It will also have a DHL contact center list so that the person knows which number to call in their country. Um, it will also have a secret envelope. Secret envelope is an envelope in which the ballot paper will go and a transmission envelope uh, which will be where the person fills out his or her full details. Election Supervisor Mohammed Sanim explains the postal ballots are brought in from a secure warehouse counted individually at the elections office and put into an envelope. They are then logged by Courier's DHL and put into boxes ready for the next flight out. All postal ballots are going out to different parts of the world simultaneously. We have uh, a team working on it currently and we anticipate doing about 2,800 uh, uh, envelopes today and uh, if there are even more that are ready, we will continue with that. Mohammed Sanim confirms there is only one ballot paper in each envelope and every voter must read all the instructions carefully so as not to cast an invalid vote. So that it remains, like, like you said, it's valid. If it's not in the envelope, it's not valid. No. Correct? Is that written in, in, in here or, or, or in this instruction booklet? It says it in there. Okay. Right. We would like to finish as soon as possible. Uh, we have got a massive team organized to do this, and uh, we are prepared to do this as, as soon as it's possible so that the, the voter has maximum time to uh, mark the ballot and send it back. Once a voter has completed his or her postal ballot, there is a DHL contact number provided to collect the envelope and send it back to the elections office. All postal ballots must be returned to the elections office by the close of polling at 6 p.m. on September 17th. Edwin Nand, FBC News. Political campaigning is everywhere, from TV commercials to newspaper and radio ads. It's also on social media and your mobile phone. FPC News spoke to political parties to find out just how much they have to spend in the hopes of securing your vote. Maggie Boyle has the details. 16 days on the campaign clock officially and with pre-poll voting starting next week, political parties are ramping up their awareness. They do the Harlem. From amateur videos to radio spots. It's stronger than the bullet. Casting the ballot is a sacred act. To strategically placed signage, the race for the polls high on visibility. So exactly how much do they have in their kitty to get the word out? We're aiming for 150,000 and we're asking uh, candidates and friends uh, for that donation in terms of uh, the budget. So you don't have that money with you now to be able uh, to splurge we're, on we're the nearly there. We're nearly there. So we've yeah, got about 100,000 plus. So. At the moment we seem to have an advertising budget of uh, close to 100,000. Uh, but um, that is still a very tight budget. We don't have, we do not have a budget which simply deals with uh, campaign. We do not. So that's the, our reality at this point in time. The One Fiji party leader Filimone Vosoronga says they've spent close to $30,000 on their campaigning. The Fiji First Party, perhaps one of the more visible campaigners, reported a spending close to $450,000, with another $79,000 on media advertisements alone. The Fiji Labour Party, in a publicized statement on income and expenditure, recorded election expenses at more than $8,000. And one of the smallest political parties with only three members, the Fiji United Freedom Party, says their budget is dependent on what their candidates can spare. All in all, from what we watch, read or hear, the political campaigning is in full thrust. As to which lines will have you ticking their number, that's a secret between you and the ballot box. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The race for elections is well and truly heating up with the number of parties holding major campaign rallies around the country. Fiji first reached out to voters in Nosori with not only a rally but a family fun day. Alan Stoltz has more. Fiji First Leader Vorenge Mbaini Marama reminded the hundreds who gathered at Syria Park that their vote matters. Not, on the, not only on the 17th, it starts on the 3rd, on the 4th, 
maritime islands in the rural areas, some will be starting to vote next week. It is a very important vote for you. The turnout was by far the largest of what's been seen at political gatherings. However, most parties are only just kicking their campaigns into high gear. Less than two weeks to elections and this is the extent of some political parties campaigning. Here today at Nosori we have the Fiji First Campaign Fund Day. And we've been talking to people present here at the rallies and multitudes of people that have come out in support of Fiji First. It's a good, uh, good family fun day. Uh, we all are enjoying over here. We've got so many uh, activities going on, plus we've got the chief guest here, Mr. Uh, PM, so it's all good. <laughs> well, I think it's good and we got an opportunity to bring our kids down to Syria Park in Nursery and we enjoy it. I like this party because uh, I got to bring my kids down for the Bouncing Castle for free. Well, uh, this party have did a lot of things for uh, public, so I'm very happy to support them. With everyone's minds on the elections, Voters are feeling the vibes, paying close attention to party politics and deciding who will get their vote. This rally has drawn so many people. I'm not sure about all other places in Fiji, but I'm from here in Nosori. And I'm happy to be here. I can say that this is a large crowd that has turned up. Fiji First President Dr. Chikuluveni, General Secretary Aya Said Kayum, and candidate Dr. Neil Sharma were also at the rally. Alan Stalls, FBC News. Still to come on FBC News, dentists worried with the prevalence of gum disease in Fiji. How are you doing, Fiji? Yes, indeed, fast approaching. Well, the major bulletin. But before we even talk about the major bulletin, what about my little news flash? Oh my gosh, please don't let him get me started on that again. Getting on the bus yesterday, <laughs> and then he tells me, brother, move on to the other seat. Because we can fit two people where you're sitting. <laughs> hey, you can't blame the dude for being honest, okay? <laughs> There's nothing honest about what he said. Hi, I'm Pivin. And I'm Fina. Your daybreak duo on, on Gold, Gold FM. FM. From Mondays to Fridays. From 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Turn, Turn us on. on. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. The National Federation Party also held a campaign rally in Shirley Park, Lotoka today with candidate Sadiq Faisal Koya saying the NFP represents everyone. Akusita Tale has more. Because National Federation Party is no fear party. And we are coming for these elections with the utmost respect to each and every citizen of this nation. The National Federation Party rally didn't see a very promising turnout. While there were party stalwarts around, many of the seats were left empty. I would like to speak to you about a party that has been 51 years old and 51 years strong. And all these other parties are our children because we are their father. That's what we're here for. Truth, justice, respect and the utmost respect for all the citizens of this nation. Koya told voters in his hometown that people still don't get equal treatment when it comes to government services. National Federation Party is coming to these elections with clean hands because we don't have blood on our hands. We have respect and we will always respect the rule of law. And speaking of rule of law, 
what the Prime Minister is saying in his advertisement. People are sleeping well under my government. Yes, they are sleeping well because you are hiding everything. You are not telling them what is wrong in this country. The rally was attended by party president Tupon Ranindalo and other NFP candidates. Akosita Talei, FBC News. Now the Western Division is currently experiencing dry weather due to below average rainfall and low humidity. Across the division, this has caused water sources such as some wells, springs and small streams to dry up. Akosita Tale reports the increase in bushfires is also a concern. The maritime islands of the Western Division that includes Malolo, Vatulele and Yasawa have started to experience water shortages. The Commissioner Western's office says they have started receiving calls for emergency water supplies to the mainland and all districts within the division. These are the areas that are outside the regional water supply where they have the, uh, their own uh, uh, water supply from uh, uh, their own uh, water sources. We will be commencing with the second round of uh, water cutting to the Yasawa. Uh, we will target uh, uh, Nadula uh, because of the, the impact that uh, the island has, uh, has been facing uh, during the, uh, the last uh, few weeks. The increasing reports of bushfires reported in the division has also prompted the Commissioner's Office to set up a team to monitor cane fields to control the fires. With the assistance of the police and uh, the military, uh, with FSC, we are going to patrol the sugarcane areas and also uh, the pine, uh, pine forest eh? to ensure that uh, uh, people should be alert that uh, we do not want to see uh, unwanted burning happening uh, all around. The Commissioner's Office has issued a warning that as of 6 p.m. this evening, anyone deciding to start fires at home must get a permit from the police, the NFA or the DO's office in light of the increasing spate of bushfires and the long dry spell. So far, three people have been arrested and charged for setting fire unnecessarily. It is very expensive uh, for the farmers and uh, it's also... Uh, uh, very expensive to everyone, particularly the economy, because uh, as you see, the cases that are coming to FSC, uh, there is a high level of burnt cane. Meanwhile, residents in the West, including other divisions, have been warned that if the current dry weather continues, the country could face a drought driven by the potential El Nino. Akosita Tale, FBC News. Gum disease is a big problem in dental care in Fiji, made worse by the fact that most Fijians are blind to this. The Dental Association of Fiji is discussing this at a three-day conference in Suva. Savara Tambo reports. Ninety dental practitioners have gathered for the annual conference and this time gum disease is top on the agenda. Most adults in Fiji lose their teeth because of gum disease. A lot of people, especially adults, lose teeth because of gum disease. They, they might have perfectly good teeth, but you know, over a period of time the gum support structures are no longer there, so you have good but shaky tooth in your mouth and they end up losing that. A gum specialist from Otago University is also sharing new protocol in how to care for patients with gum disease. Fiji Dental Association President Dr. Vikash Singh says People need to be serious about how to care for their teeth or they could end up with major tooth decay. Just brushing teeth is not sufficient. I think brushing it correctly is most important. We see a lot of patients who do not correctly brush and they end up with a lot more problems. These include wear. We, I always say to patients, try and use a soft or an extra soft type of brush because with that and in a proper action, you do not do additional damage to your teeth. While there aren't any statistics on the prevalence of gum disease, most dentists agree that it's a common issue among Fijians who don't consider dental hygiene as being important. 
participants from the region have also been invited to the conference. Um, we sympathize with our regional colleagues because they do not have access to such high level uh, professional development activities and so by coming to Fiji because some of these countries are quite small and with only few dentists um, this is a rare opportunity for them to gain access, uh, have access to professional development activities. The conference expects to show local latest accepted practices that ought to be adopted by all dental practitioners. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. Rewa has made it through to the final of the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants. And Seven's coach is impressed with fitness test results. That and more after the break. Mera chand mujhe aaya hai nazar ay raat zara tham tham ke guzar Chaya hai nasha mere aankhon par ay raat zara tham tham ke guzar Reh jaye na pyaasa mera pyar mere baagon mein bhar de mera yaar ay raat zara tham tham ke guzar ay raat zara tham tham ke guzar Hi Mirchi FM par main hu Jitin Shandil shamil ho jayega hamare saath tonight show mein Monday to Friday from 7 pm so what was the question again? Oh, why, why is it called the traffic jam? Well, you know, the reason is it's because I have two really cool cars. Seriously cool cars. And I love drifting, racing, Because I am fast and slick and plus I like to create a bit of traffic jam myself with a whole lot of great music. Burumunaka, my name is Rio, your host and DJ right here on the Today FM Traffic Jam every weekday from 3pm to 7 right here on Today FM, today's hit music. <laughs> Leading sports tonight, the second semi-final in the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants football tournament between Lotoka and Ba is currently underway in Suva. We now cross live to the ANZ Stadium in Suva to catch some of the action. Get. Picks it up before Mavilaku could get to it. Races up with a long driving kick. Neil mistimes it. Shamil Rao with the <laughs> tights on here this evening. What do you call those tights? In the Looks like the skins. skins. Meanwhile, Rewa was the first team to book a spot in the final after defeating Suva 2-1 in extra time. Iniamboko scored his fifth goal of the tournament for Suva before Rewa equalized through Savinada Nakalevu. Rewa striker Epeli Sokuru pounced on a defensive lapse by Suva to score the winner. Ravenes turns, plays it through, Inyamboko with the turn, and Inyamboko has opened the account. Sale Misale with the first shot, and a mistake by Rangata, and Sabinada Nakalevu has equalised in the 36th minute of play. That's what I was thinking last night. Into the air, across. As Rewa come into attack, covered on to Epeli, Sokuru, Sokuru turns and Sokuru turns and Sokuru has put Rewa into the lead. The final will be held at 3pm tomorrow before which the third and fourth playoff kicks off at 1pm. The BLK Nandranga rugby side has retained the HFC Fairbrother Trophy, defeating Neita Siri 28-20 at Lawanga Park. Neita Siri proved a more determined outfit than the one thumped by the Stallions last weekend. The Hillmen scored two tries, two penalties and two conversions. Nandranga made a slow start but came back with three tries to Meli Kurisaru, Emusi Vudango and Eremasi Rondronro, with Apisalome Wangatambu adding 13 points from the boot. Northland are next in line to challenge Nandranga for the HFC Fairbrother Trophy next Saturday. It's only a short, short turnaround for the Vodafone Fiji 7 squad to the first leg of the IRB series at the Gold Coast. 
National coach Ben Ryan was impressed by the fitness test results earlier this week and considers the players to be in good shape heading into a two-week camp from Monday. If I can be as bold as getting 20% fitter in the next five weeks, I think that's possible um, and I think that's what we'll aim for. So, yeah, all in all, I thought the fitness tests were good and it gave me a good understanding of some strengths that we have. Um, you know, I look at their scores they make in the squat, for example, and we're well ahead of the sort of scores that we would have had over in England. Um, and that's pretty good. And their speed tests were also excellent, you know, uh, to have some times that I know would be um, as good or... Um, uh, as good and maybe maybe quicker than Dan Norton as well, one or two of the boys. So um, I, I guess I'm lucky I can compare those statistics, certainly in those areas. So no, that's good. The 30-man squad will participate in a tournament in Levuka next month to select a 12-member squad to the Gold Coast Sevens in Australia in October. Meanwhile, the Fiji Rugby Union's annual general meeting that was scheduled to be held today in Singatoka was called off due to a lack of quorum. This is the third time this year that the FRU board has failed to convene the AGM. And the Fair Trade McCoy Bulldogs Rugby League side will progress to the semi-finals of the Vodafone Cup Top 8 competition after beating Nambour Broncos 22-10 in the quarterfinals this afternoon. The two teams were evenly matched in the opening quarter before the Bulldogs pulled away to secure their semi-final spot. The second quarter-final match is still underway between Nandera Panthers and Burenito Cowboys. Meanwhile, in the Premier Grade, Kinoya Sea Eagles, Tuvalu Tigers, Lotoka Crushers and Nandi Eels have progressed to the semi-finals after winning their quarter-final fixtures this afternoon. Now, Basketball Fiji is looking into engaging more schools for the Tuckers Championships next year. This was after the successful turnout at this year's tournament that ended on Thursday. Josephine Navula has the details. With an increase in the number of schools in this year's secondary school championships, organizers are keen on providing assistance for schools interested in participating next year. We would like to encourage uh, more schools to participate in our uh, secondary school championships. Um, our development of, uh, we have our resources available to assist the schools in regards to providing uh, uh, development officers to come and visit the schools. Kuoma says every school will have the equal opportunity to qualify for the tournament through playoffs, which will be held before the main event. Uh, it's open for everyone. We usually organize a, uh, prior to this championship, we organized a, uh, a weekly league games that was held in, uh, here in Suva and also in, uh, in Lotok. Meanwhile, John Wesley College and Yetsian Secondary School have been crowned the new under-19 champions. John Wesley defeated Natambot 21 points to 18 to win the boys' title, while Yetsian defeated the girls from St. Joseph's 31 points to 28 in the final. Josephine Navula, FBC Sports. Brief showers were experienced over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. Fine weather prevailed elsewhere. Warm temperatures prevailed over most of the country today, Lombasa hitting 30 degrees. It will be a lovely Sunday with fine conditions forecast for the entire group. As for the further outlook, easterly winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. Recapping our top stories tonight. UN negotiators have begun talks with Syrian rebels who are holding 44 Fijian troops captive in the Golan Heights. Postal ballots being shipped out to voters all over the world. And drought brings with it warrior fires in the Western Division. It's time for the Fijian Speak segment. To discuss clearly that all the people at the end of the day should have a good meal and about $150 a day or $100 a day for skilled people to work. Helping poor people eh, to do good things. Eh? Just real democracy, that's it. Just democracy? Yeah. Freedom of speech, that's it. 
you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizens eyes at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page FBC News. If you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or hashtag FBC News. And to receive the latest headlines on your mobile phone, text subspace FBC to 777. That's your news for tonight. Join us again tomorrow. Good evening. रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन पर आपका स्वागत है बच्चों की दुनिया में हमेशा की तरह आज भी हम आपके लिए कहानियाँ और कविताएं लेकर आए हैं और बच्चों आप हमें कॉल भी कर सकते हैं नमस्कार मैं हूँ पल्लवी रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन पर मंडे टू फ्राइडे तीन से लेकर चार बजे तक बच्चों की दुनिया में और चार ऐसी लेकर सात बजे तक मस्तानी शाम के सफर में शामिल रहिए मेरे साथ